One bot ranked fourth overall for total wins in all competitions. Bronco with another impressive flip. Look at Gigabyte doing all kinds of somersaults in the air. The other is just coming off back-to-back semi-final appearances. Incredible. Incredible what Wipeout's doing here. Only one of them will start the new season 1-0. Tonight on BattleBoss Reborn Cup Fight Night. Nightmare! <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of BattleBots Reborn Cup. I'm super excited for you guys to see what's going on today, but we're going to get through as fast as possible because Nick's making me be here and I want to be in my pool. It's true, it's 81 degrees outside, but the temperature in the box is going to be a lot hotter when you see tonight's fight card. It's pretty, uh, pretty fantastic. Huzzah! <laughs> With that being said, let's get into the night. We've got the season five quarterfinal that never was, as the big spinner of Nightmare takes on the big everything of Huge. We also have the Battle of the Bees, who's got the bigger bite between Stinger and Killer Bee. And it all leads up to our main event this evening between two bots who have racked up wins, but not titles. It's Bronco versus Wipeout. And for more on that match, let's bring in our pit reporter, Captain Manti. Alright, thank you, and we're back again after a very entertaining first episode. Welcome back, everybody. It's your boy, Captain Mantine, and this uh, this fight card's looking like it's going to be a good one. This opener is going to be a, just a colossal, earth-shattering hit, or maybe two or three if we're lucky, between Deep Six and Helichopper, which is just the Battle of the Beasts. We've got the Battle of the Bees, which, ironically, I think Killer B is uh, more of a bee than Stinger is. Oh, who's the real bee? That's the question we've got to ask in that fight. Huge coming back with a very solid rebuild. We've got uh, bigger wheels, more pieces. That weapon has been upgraded. A nightmare coming off of a solid, solid podium finish. Of course, the main event, one of the Waiachi boys, Wipeout, will be taking on the Inertia Labs, probably better heavyweight robot, Bronco. If I had to guess, I'd have to take Bronco in this fight to get that one and done flip before it takes too, too much damage, but we're going to have to find out and see. Thanks, Cap, for that insight. I'm really excited to see how that match unfolds. You know, it's two bots that they have racked up a lot of wins lately, but they want the trophy cabinet filled as well, and they're going to be desperate for that. It's going to be interesting to see just how desperate. But, as I finish saying that, we're going to go into our first match for the night, Deep Six versus Helichopter. What a way to kick things off tonight with two of the deadliest robots in the field. Yeah, if you're new to BattleBots, you don't know what we're about to do. Deep Six has the biggest vertical spinner in the field. Helichopper has one of the most dangerous horizontal spinners in the field. These two hit hard, they are deadly, and it's going to result in pain for somebody. Deep Six is the underdog going into this match. What will be his recipe for victory? Well, Helichopper is weak when he loses any one of his four wheels. So if he can find a way to get to the wheels, Helichopper's movement is going to be very much compromised, and I think that might be a good opening for Deep Six. Or if he can break off one of the hammers and Helichopper can't spin. Well, let's see if he can wheel his way into a victory. Down the buttons. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? It's robot fighting time! In the red square. He may be fragile like sticks, but he knows a few funny tricks. Be warned, he hits like a bag of bricks. It's Deep Six! In the blue square. Where you're going, you don't need the highway to hell, cause you'll be flying there first class on this bot's new airplane. It's Hella Chopper!
the bot battle begin. I really do wonder how many good hits we're going to get between these two colossal weapons. Both of them from the beginning just trying to speed up. Oh, there's the first big impact. Deep Six rocking, but he's still on his wheels. Big hit again. There goes a piece from Deep Six's weapon. Oh, now it's getting ugly. Pieces are falling. Deep Six is trying to survive now. What happened to Helichopper's weapon? It's turned off for some reason. And now it's off on the ground. Deep Six removed the entire thing in one shot. That's insane. And now he's moving in because he senses blood. Can he flip Helichopper and seal it? And he does. But what happened to Deep Six? His, his weapon became unbalanced and now they're both... Are they both immobile? Is this is this gonna be how it ends? Well, Helichopper's kind of skating across the ground. That's not gonna be counted as translational movement. And I think, if any second, they should start counting them out. There it is. Ladies and gentlemen, this might become the first ever double knockout in BattleBots Reborn Cup history. Oh my goodness, what did we just witness? Well, I don't think that's how anyone saw this fight going, but uh, it happened. Yeah, it's crazy to think that from the get-go, we kind of thought that Deep Six was losing a little bit more, but they both ended up in the same spot. <laughs> yeah, Deep Six lost a lot of pieces, but then out of nowhere, what happened to Hella Chopper's weapon? It just turned off. It's crazy, actually. Like, maybe a hit did that, or the driver? I, I have no idea. And then maybe a bit of a driving mistake here from Deep Six to get himself stuck, but, uh... Yeah, we're headed to the judges for a decision. How do you think this one's gonna go? I have no idea, to be completely fair. The results from the judges are in. Your winner, by unanimous decision, is... Deep Six! Well, that was insane. Oh boy. Well, there's there's always room for something new to happen, and we got it in that fight. Um, you know, it was it was great though. I think even though it was short, a little bit sweet, it was very entertaining. And uh, I don't think that's the result many people expected either. So that's going to shake up the standings early here. It's interesting too because it's history in the making, and we always appreciate something like that. Where were you the day when the first double knockout <laughs> happened on the channel? Comment below. You better have been here. <laughs> But that doesn't matter now. We're going into the second fight of the night. We have Mecha Rampage versus Mecha Rampage. A lot of eyes will be on Mecha Rampage this season after he made it to the quarterfinals in 2020. Absolutely unexpected what he did in season five, and he went marauding through the table before eventually losing to Nightmare. He's an awkward bot, and I think a lot of bots last year found that out the hard way, and Mecha Rampage will be eager to do the same, but now people know what he's about, so it might be a little more difficult. Meanwhile, Mechavor finally showed us some of his potential when he won himself a spot in Fight Night via the qualifiers. That's right, he did. Um, Mechavor is a bot that when he first entered in Season 2, uh, there was a little bit talk of him winning a title, and it has been far from the truth. He has been very outclassed most of his seasons, but he looks okay now. He's got a better weapon. Some of the glaring uh, issues are still there. No Shremek. Luckily, he won't, he won't need it in this fight, so we'll see weapon power versus weapon power, and I think Mechavor will come out on top. Well, let's see. The best weapon may win. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? It's robot fighting time! In the red square, if it's going to be a long, hard season, he's prepared. After all, he's long and hard. It's Mecha Rampage! In the blue square. Just being in the qualifiers is an embarrassment to him, but at least he made it out. Right, Whiplash? It's Mechavor!
let the battle of the mechas begin. Interesting to see how this one shapes up. Mecha Rampage, of course, coming off a great season last season. But this is not a good start for him. Oh, uh, two wheels! Already two wheels gone. This is insane. Mechavore showing us a little bit of what he did in the qualifiers. This is what we've expected from the machine since his season two debut. Absolutely ruthless start, and Mecha Rampage looks completely blindsided. Now all he can do is really spin around with the two wheels on the same side. There goes another one. That one was the kill saws, I believe. One more. Oh! And a counter shot from Mecha Rampage has just changed the complexion of this fight. Mechavore weaponless. All Mechavore needed was one more wheel, but now, now he can't even get it. Well, now he's really got to think this strategy over. Barely a minute into the fight. Mechavore now weaponless, trying to attack that last wheel of Mecha Rampage. Trying to get rid of it with sheer brute force. Don't know if that's how it works, though. Can he get around to the side of Mecha Rampage and force him over to the kill saws or the spikes? That's probably his best bet now. Mecha Rampage hanging on for dear life. Remember, folks, there is no rules about crab walking, so Mecha Rampage, as long as he can move around the box, he will not get counted out, and Mechavore has to find a way to seal this or wait for a decision. Getting closer to the saws, but he evaded it. Another shrapnel getting in the way from both machines there as it gets shoved to the side. So what do you do here if you're Mechavore? Do you hang back, or do you try and get that last wheel and risk a little bit of damage? I feel like at this point in time, risking it would be beneficial, but I have no idea. He's trying to use his saw still. That's not going to work anymore. Mecha Rampage knows he's been in this situation before a few times last season, missing wheels and still being able to compete. Now Mechavore going at Mecha Rampage with the, with the front there. He can take a few more hits where the weapon motor is as opposed to getting hit on the chassis. There's some smoke now coming. I think that's uh, all part of Mechavore's plan. As long as he doesn't get knocked out trying to show aggression and strategy in these closing stages, then maybe he can still eke out a decision win. He's got Mecha Rampage well pinned against the wall. He's not really giving him any breathing room. I feel like this match is going to make it all the way to a judge's decision. Yeah, Mechavore is struggling to get the right angles on Mecha Rampage, who has done well to survive up to this point. And we're hitting the final 10 seconds now. This one is more than likely going the distance. And it's a little cloudy on who might actually take it. We have an idea, but we won't know until the scores are in. Well, as the judges deliberate, let's look at the replays. What a fast start from Mechavore. That was impressive. Yeah, Mechavore right off the bat got rid of two of the wheels, leading to a third, and then started to take damage because all he could do was kind of push him around the box. And was he maybe a bit too aggressive here when he lost his weapon? Should he have backed off? I feel like there could have been some thought between each of his attacks because maybe he could have gotten that fourth and final wheel if he was a little more strategic. But what do you think the judges are going to decide? Who do you think wins? It's very tough with so many avenues. Mechavore definitely getting all of the early damage. I'd say that affected the fight more. But uh, we won't know until the judges get their scores in, and that is coming just right now. So let's go see the Seaborg and get the ruling on that. Yeah. The results from the judges are in. Your winner by unanimous decision is Mechavore! Well, I'd say that was a very interesting way to win. Definitely not how Mechavore drew it up. Uh, as we said in the first episode, I believe, with Bombshell, a win is a win. But in the case of Mechavore, that was very ugly, and I think they will be worried going into the next fight. It'll be interesting to see, but curious to hoping that they can pull their again. Yeah, we'll see. Anyways, going into the third, we have Stinger versus Killer B. It's a battle of the wedges. 
and the bees. Yeah, we paired these two together because of the funny theme, but also they are kind of similar. You know, you've got Stinger, who is a very big brute. He's got the wedge that can flip and maneuver bots around a little more so than Killer Bee, who's got a static wedge, two wheels, but don't underestimate this bot. He made the quarterfinals last year, lost to Son of Waiachi. There's no shame in that. He's a decent bot. Yeah, Stinger is one of a handful of competitors who will be joined by a mini bot this season. Um, how could Flickr be useful in this match? Well, we've seen already that between drones and minibots, at the very worst, they're a nuisance. But when you've got a fairly mobile minibot with flames, we know how good flamethrowers are. We've seen it with Gruff already. Um, it could be a serious wild card for bots like Stinger that need that extra little oomph to get farther in tournaments. It'll be interesting to see this match with an additional little bot going around. It's uh, adorable. But I'm kind of rooting for him, so let's see how it goes out. Yeah, Flicker wins on his own, Stinger <laughs> loses too. Yeah! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? It's robot fighting time! In the red square. Ah, summer. Warm weather, going to the beach, and dealing with a bunch of little bastards poking at you over there. Stinger! In the blue square. Oh look, another one. Hope you bought your wasp and hornet spray, because we've got a massive problem here in the battle box. It's Killer B! Let the bot battle begin. So our first look at how a mini bot's gonna be involved and Killer B attacked it immediately and now he goes after the main bot. I am only here for Flicker. I am here for his success. So Flicker's caught between a rock and a hard place and his dad. Stinger looking a little dazed at the moment. Killer B is a little more clean with some of these attacks and he catches Stinger nicely throwing him into the wall. The mini bot keeps getting stuck between both of the bots. I don't know how well Oh no! actually helping. Flicker goes for a ride and then Killer B does the same thing. Flicker flipped over as Stinger tries to get in. Maybe this is part of the Killer B strategy. Take out the mini bot first and then you don't have to worry about it. Certainly a risk, but at the moment, uh, Stinger is trying to get over to help Flicker and he can't. Killer B continues to charge playing guard. Poor Flicker dead in the corner. Stinger is trying his best to get away from Killer B, but he just can't. I think any moment now, Kill uh, sorry, not Killer B, Flicker will get counted out. He's trying to use the flame from the corner. Oh, good shot from Stinger, and now Killer B's flipped. Flicker has been counted out at this point, so it's just the main bots now. Good early start from Killer B. He took out the distraction. Halfway through the fight now. Who's winning on your card, Sam? I feel like both of the bots are actually level. That's a nice little flip there. But both of the bots seem to be doing decent throughout the whole match. Definitely seeing the difference in weaponry with Stinger able to actually flip Killer B, whereas Killer B is more or less just controlling Stinger in one place, like he is now. He's underneath Stinger trying to line him up to the kill saws, and he does take a bit of a, a scuff there. I feel like Stinger does have a little more ground clearance when it's a head-on match, so he's able to get underneath and flip, just There's like another we saw. nice one, yeah. Killer B, every time he gets flipped, he immediately needs to get flipped again. Look that at that was shot! amazing! Getting some air miles there, Killer B, but now he's underneath Stinger again as these two continue to go back and forth. They may not have damaging weapons, but this fight has been just as entertaining as two of the big sluggers. Oh, another big shot! Killer B, is he gonna get stuck? He's not, he rocks out of it at the last second. That was a close call for him. That would have been a hard way to lose after all of the hard work he's been putting into this fight. 
And he continues the charge. Stinger's doing a great job of throwing him all across the arena. It was definitely a shaky start from Stinger, but he's worked his way back. And he's definitely earned some points. This one is going to go to the distance. And it's anyone's guess who's going to win it. One last shot from Stinger. That's it. lot to dissect from this fight and it starts with Killer B's strategy of going after Flicker first. Poor Flicker, my little dude just wanted to get in there and use his flamethrower. Here he is getting collateral tossed by both of the big boys. It was definitely a shaky start from Stinger but he rebounded fairly well and got some nice flips. Earlier on too, I feel like Killer B did have a little more control. But I, if I were to choose, I'd say Stinger wins this one. He just ultimately threw him all over the box. In terms of the points, where would you count the absence of Flicker? Does it count as damage because he was taken out? Does it count as strategy? There's a lot of different ways to look at that, and I'm sure the judges are going to take their time with that. For sure. I wouldn't even know what category to put that in. Um, it's going to be a hard decision from the judges, especially since this is the first match with a mini bot. And lastly, Cap, what is your opinion on this fight? There was a lot to digest. Yeah, Cap. Uh, I think in this fight, it's going to be a really close one, because I think Killer B had more sustained control and aggression, but the things that Stinger did were a lot more impressive, so it's all going to depend on how the judges look at that. The results from the judges are in. We have a split decision. Judge Matt scored the battle for Killer B. <laughs> Judge Nick scored the battle for Stinger. <laughs> Judge Rich scored the battle for your winner. Flicker, no! <laughs> Poor Flicker. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see him next time, maybe. Um, but yeah, uh, as opposed to the what we saw with the main bots, very close. I assumed we all would have expected that. But once again, Killer B proves he is not to be underestimated. Another solid win for him under his belt. Um, it'll be interesting to see how the entire fight night round goes for him, though, because he's eventually going to have to face some tough competition. Yeah, it will be interesting to see where he goes, but we are going into the fourth fight of the night. We have Tantrum versus Voltron. Tantrum is coming off a deep cup run last season, but once again, he has a new build. Yeah, um, I don't know why he decided to change it exactly, but we've got a new Tantrum. It's a little bit smaller. The wedge setup isn't as big and profound as it is in the middle, but the weapon is still there and it can still slap some opponents. On the other side, Voltronic finally has a new build as well. What do you make of it? Well, the build for him was long overdue, but unfortunately, the only real improvement is in the appearance department. The weapon is still suspect, the bot is still slow, the ground clearance is still there, but I don't know if he has enough tools to go far in this tournament, so I'm waiting for him to prove me wrong. I just don't. I have my doubts. Well, let's see which of the new builds is the better. Down in the box. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? It's robot fighting time! In the red square. When he gets angry, it's sometimes random. But this beatdown will be anything but phantom. It's Tantrum! In the blue square. Don't worry, he's not a wedge. He has a lifter too. It just doesn't work very well. It's Voltronic! The bot battle begin. Very important for both of these two bots to get off to a good start this season. 
knowing that they'll be in the middle of the pack if they don't impress more than the average bot. Voltronic so far winning the ground clearance battle, Ooh. at least the once, well now twice. Tantrum got a brief moment there where he was underneath Voltronic, but he couldn't take advantage, and Voltronic gets a subtle lift in. Good use for Tantrum. He used his little arms to kind of balance himself to get over Voltronic. Little trip to the kill saws for Tantrum, and then he's bullied over in a head-to-head -head collision. He self-writes nice and quickly. So far, Voltronic doing a good job of winning the ground clearance battle. Tantrum not really getting the ability to to weasel his way in and get some hits. He kind of did it there. Yeah, he's trying to kind of slalom to the side, but Voltronic is having none of it at the moment. We know that weapon of Tantrum packs a punch, but if he can't get underneath his opponents, then it's relatively useless. He's doing everything he can. He's onto the side now of Voltronic, who just refuses to budge and then backs away. Again, ground clearance is just a huge battle in this in itself. Oh, big shot again, nose to nose, and Tantrum came off worse, but now he's underneath Voltronic. Is the he getting any hits, or is the weapon just stalled? It looked like the weapon stalled there, and he couldn't get enough purchase. Oh, was a he positive. has a good chance. There's a good attack that Tantrum needed. He was falling behind on points, but this will help surely. Voltronic struggling to get away. There's a piece on the ground. It looks like it's part of Voltronic's already useless lifter, so don't worry about that. And now he's flipped. Is Tantrum going to use this as an opportunity? And he is. Trying to be nice and patient and attack the underside so we can get towards the wheels. Voltronic now getting pushed into another corner. This is a strong period for Tantrum. He needs to keep this momentum going if he wants to make sure he wins this fight. But Voltronic can fight back and he does so. He's underneath again. Taking Tantrum around the box and shoving him into the wall. It's turning out to be an okay battle so far. They're really going at it. Yeah, kind of even, too, in the terms of getting underneath one another. Antrim did a good job there, too, of firing his Shremek early so that he didn't fully get flipped against the wall. But now Voltronic is pushing him back. Yeah, he is using his arms quite wisely. Very patient approach here from Voltronic, and he slips underneath again. Can he lift Tantrum one more time and score a few more points? Tantrum has stopped moving briefly. There he goes. Okay, he's back in and out. Ah, and the countdown begins. So it feels like this is gonna go all the way. I wonder how the judges are gonna score it, but we will find out Oh, soon. Tantrum's getting some late damage, but is it gonna be too late? The horn sounds. He left it late, surely. Well, that ended up being a very very much nail-biter kind of a fight. Both bots were a little tentative at times. Yeah, the ground clearance really was the enemy of both bots in this. One of them would able would be able to get underneath the other and then it would just reverse. It's, it's really gonna be hard to call this match. Tantrum definitely struggled for the most part with the ground clearance battle. He tried at times just going head on and he came off worse. Yeah, he did lose those head-on matches sometimes, which resulted in him being flipped, but he was able to raise himself with his little tiny arms. One deciding factor might be the damage category. Tantrum did damage the lifter, but it didn't affect Voltronic much. It's going to be interesting to see what the judges decide. That's going to be true. And if that late flurry did anything too, let's go down to the Seaborg to get the official score. The results from the judges are in. We have a split decision. Judge Matt scored the battle for Voltronic. Judge Witch scored the battle for Tantrum. Judge Nick scored the battle for your winner Voltronic! Well, that f***ing sucked. <laughs> <laughs> We're supposed to be impartial and like, you know, build it up a little bit. I mean, they're still interesting and it gives good content, you know, getting to know who wins and such. 
It is very interesting to see bots in a situation like this. You know, it was a very tactical battle, it was mentally draining, um, and it required a lot of character for you to step up and overcome adversity. In this case, Tantrum didn't, um, so now he's looking at a bad performance in the first round. He's looking at a loss as well, so he's up against it. Round two is going to be very crucial for him. It's going to be interesting to see how that pans out, but we are going to take a quick commercial break, and in the meantime, you'll be able to watch some fights when we get back. That's right. Now it's your fucking nightmare! <laughs> Hello everybody, I hope you guys are enjoying BattleBots Reborn Cup this year, and if you're not, why the hell are you still here? Anyway, for all of you that are enjoying it, how about enjoying something else? y'all wanna play with these bots yourself? Yeah, you heard me right, because for the first time ever, we are releasing a free-to-download pack of Robot Arena 2 specifically themed for this season, BattleBots Reborn Cup Season 6. Now, if you don't have the game already, yes, this is a new version of the game to download. Hopefully, that's not a problem. We got a problem? Huh? You want to talk about it? You want to fight about it? You want to throw hands? I'll throw hands. Head to the description now to find the link to download this for free, of course, because why would I charge? This version of the game will have all 124 competitors from this season, including all of the ones that were eliminated in the qualifiers on Patreon that you haven't gotten to see. Not only that, of course, it will include all of the drones, all of the mini bots, and all of the different weapon configurations as long as a bot has multiple ones. The game is also equipped with every single custom part that we've put into this game to make the bots the way they are, to make the drones, and all of the other good stuff. So you don't have to worry about converting anything over. Matt's already done that for you. Thank Matt in the comments. All of the bots will also have their adjusted chassis health as is during the cup and during the filming and everything you've seen us talk about. This version of the game will also have a couple nice little perks beside that. You know, you got component freedom already taken care of, you got your action cam, and you got a nice big scroll bar. So when you go to import these bots on a team, you don't have to search between like one of six options and then you, you click the scroll bar and then bam, you're in the Z's and Y's. It's like, I didn't mean to get to that. I was trying to get to P. I know some of you have asked about downloading bots and stuff, and now the time has finally come. You're free! Run free! Take all of the bots and files you could ever ask for, download it on your own computer, and knock yourself out. But before you do, make sure you thank the main contributor to all of this, and that's Mattyator. The man has done so much to make this possible, it wouldn't have happened without him. So thank him, thank the rest of the guys that have built bots as well. Don't forget to download that, of course, but don't start playing until we get to the rest of the episode, yo, there's still some fights going on, and we better go take a look. So that's all for me now. Let's get back to the episode. Now it's your fucking nightmare. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. While we were on that said break, we happened to see the fifth fight of the night, Brutus vs. Lockjaw. You guys get to see the highlights, and here they are. Brutus and Lockjaw began their campaigns hopeful for not just a win, but a positive addition to this fixture's history. Unfortunately, like some Americans, both bots were a little too conservative. Let the bot battle, battle begin! begin. From the early stages, it was clear that both bots were more focused on preventing mistakes rather than winning the fight. And they're in another stalemate here. While Brutus seemed to edge the ground clearance battle, Lockjaw showed solid reactions to avoid danger. Lockjaw nearly got caught, but he escapes! As the fight went on, the arena hazard started to play a bigger role, but still nothing could separate the two. Oh, Brutus took a shot there, but he looks okay! Time was running out, and a tense, close judge's decision was on the cards. Until... Oh, big shot by the spikes! And now Brutus is in trouble! Lockjaw has him flipped! Brutus knew he was behind on points, but there wasn't enough time to salvage it. And when the bell sounded, Lockjaw took the unanimous decision for a 1-0 start. Lockjaw! Well, that f***ing sucked! Again! <laughs> what can you say? They cancelled each other out pretty well. Good thing it was highlighted. Gotta do it sometimes. Anyways, into the sixth for the night, we have Rotator versus Valkyrie. Another new build for Rotator, but this one packs a punch. Yep, this is a uh, slightly altered build from a builder, Wet Pretzels. Um, he did a very good job with his original build, and the tweaks for this new Rotator are pretty nice. 
He's a lot bigger, he's got a lot more powerful of a weapon, he runs very well inverted, and I'm excited to see how he's going to do. I'm excited to see it too. Meanwhile, Valkyrie found a way out of the qualifiers despite his flaws. What can we expect from him in the fight night round? Ugh, I don't know, because this bot has, uh, he's had his problems. He has had a lot of defeats to his name, he's been very involved in predictions. I can't believe he made it out of the qualifiers as well, but maybe that's because I'm not seeing something that this bot actually has to offer. Um, he's very similar to Rotator, but he also lost to the old Rotator in the Predictions 2020 series, so I'm not very confident about his uh, chances in this fight. We'll have to see about the rest of Fight Night. Well, let's go watch Down in the Box. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? It's... Robot fighting time! In the red square, we built by the wet wet, now prepare to slap a sket. It's Rotator! In the blue square, is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's just a less crappy PP3D. It's Valkyrie! Let the bot battle begin! Recent enemies in the Predictions 2020 series. We'll see how they fare where it matters a little bit more here in the cup. Ooh, shot there by Rotator as Valkyrie spun awkwardly. Rotator is getting some hits on the wheels quite easily. Trying to decide who's getting more damage in these head-to-head -head collisions. It's kind of hard to tell at the moment. It's, inter it's interesting to see where the damage is being taken, too, because it looks like Rotato is getting the wheels, whereas Valkyrie seems to be hitting the weapon. Valkyrie is definitely the lighter machine of the two, and he's kind of spinning more on impact. But he's getting his weapon into dangerous spots as well. He's trying to undercut uh, the wheels and get around the wheel guards that Rotator has. Well, he's not going to do that anymore. The weapon goes flying off of Valkyrie. And here I was just about to say, it's going to be interesting who loses the first bit. So now Valkyrie, without the weapon, is extremely exposed to the already dangerous Rotator. Here comes the smoke out of Valkyrie. I feel like we can easily predict how this is going to end. Definitely doesn't look like we're going the distance here. We've done so a lot tonight, but... Rotator looks dead set on finishing this fight before the bell. And it's a nod to the improvements of Rotator as well. He's definitely looking lethal so far in this first fight. Halfway through, doesn't look good for Valkyrie. Looks like he's going to be on his uh -oh. way to Valhalla. There's another big shot as Rotator closing in on the finish. He needs one more good shot. Valkyrie is drowning under the pressure right now. How long can Valkyrie survive? He hasn't had to dig this deep since the first round of the qualifiers against Overhaul. So far, he hasn't really lived up to what he needed to. Okay, there's getting shot. There it is. He's finally got the killer blow. This one is over. Well, very quickly, this fight went from even Stevens to one-sided. I knew that at some point one of them was going to lose something, and that was going to be the determining factor, and it just so happened that poor Valkyrie lost the weapon. There it is, a very nice shot from Rotator. It really did look even from there on out, but then, once the weapon was gone, Valkyrie was drowning. Yeah, Valkyrie didn't have a stand a chance once he lost his weapon. Gotta give it to Rotator, he did a very good job. He'll start the season 1-0, which is always a good thing. Yeah. Good job, Rotator. Yeah, that's a very impressive first win. Not the greatest of competitions, so he'll still be uh, waiting to impress us fully, and that second match will be pretty important for him. Great first start. Yeah, good job. Oh, right.
right, seventh. Seventh fight of the night. Right, right. Nightmare versus Huge. Both bots are coming off an incredible year and will be looking for a fast start. Yeah, who would have expected uh, these bots to not only both make the round of 16, but then for Nightmare to continue the good form all the way to the semifinals, eventually finishing fourth place. Um, he has been rebuilt with a new weapon. Uh, it's a little more fair than the one last year was. Huge has also got a new rebuild where he's got slightly smaller wheels, but it might help his mobility and it'll definitely help him uh, deal with some of his opponents. Well, both bots have had important changes. Who would you say had the most significant ones? I would argue Nightmares is more significant simply because that weapon would um, get destroyed in certain ways in fights but still be functional and then be harder to break off. So with this new design, I'm really curious to see, first of all, does it still pack a punch like it always was doing in the Season 5 run-up, but can it hold on? Can it withstand punishment? I don't know if it can, so we're going into this pretty blind. Well, let's see our way to the bots. I can see clearly now, the I'm not blinded. Oh, I thought we were going to It's okay. It's okay, okay. worked out. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? It's robot fighting time! In the Red Square. This bot is extra angry this season. Do you want to know why? Because the song used for this season trailer was his and he isn't even in it for more than a second. It's your nightmare! <laughs> In the blue square, last year he lit the fuse, now he's coming for the title and booze. Raise a toast for HUGE! Alright Cap, when it comes down to these two awkward bots, the fight will probably be won with the reach advantage. Who do you think has got it? The thing about this fight is, I think that Huge will probably have the reach advantage here. And now, I know that those wheels are going to be a big target for Nightmare, but Huge, despite being very crippled in mobility, can turn on a dime. And I think that exposed weapon motor of Nightmare may come into play. Huge's weapon, it's the internals and the weapon motor are encased in the chassis, and I think that's going to be big coming into this fight. Let the bot battle begin. I know this is a fight that people really wanted to see last year. Nightmare with a good start. He's already ripped a part off a of huge. Huge really Ooh. doesn't have good ground clearance with those slippery wheels. So he's already kind of disadvantaged in this match. Another big shot. Nightmare is getting all of the good shots here. And Huge is smoking, I believe. Huge needs to get some... Oh, oh my no! god! There goes the Disc of Nightmare! He got too aggressive, and it is gone. And it was, it's such a shame. It was a great start from Nightmare. Nightmare was holding the match. Oh my gosh. Well, Huge will be breathing a sigh of relief. Now he's in the driver's seat. He's just got to make sure he doesn't make any dumb mistakes. It looks like he's lost one of the legs in the back, and that's crucial to the setup. So he's got to be very careful not to lose the second one as Nightmare continues to charge. And they both keep tripping over a motor. Can, can we get away from the trap? No, please. Don't go. No. We don't need another uh -oh. loose Roda moment. Oh, Nightmare just kind of collapsed in himself. A very strange maneuver there, but he's back. Able to self-right perhaps a little more easily now that the weapon's gone and there's less weight. Huge getting some small hits in. Weapon stalled whenever he gets in close to Nightmare. Almost seems like Huge is having a hard time connecting with Nightmare because of the awkward chassis shape that Nightmare has. It doesn't help either that Huge has very little control over his wheels. As you see there as he slides lazily to the right. He's actually smoking pretty heavily, so he'll have to be careful not to get too close to any arena. What is Nightmare doing? Nightmare? Hello? You good? You, you know we're still fighting, right? <laughs> Huge moving in again to cause some more damage. Weapon stall yet again. That's expected, though. 
Maybe part of Nightmare's plan if he can just hold on for a judge's decision and hope for the best. He can, he can get the pushing battle won if he keeps going at huge. He's just got to be careful not to take too much extra damage. He's backing away, trying to reset himself. This is pretty good from Nightmare to rebound after what he's suffered in the early stages. Yeah, it's going to be really interesting if this makes it all the way. Who's going to win? Because oh. wait, it was a piece lost? Who was that lost from? It looked like it was one of Nightmare's wheels. He does have them stacked, so he should be okay. We'll see how hindered the movement is when these bots separate. If Nightmare even lets them separate. Yeah, I think Huge is starting to get a little bit frustrated with Nightmare's tactics. We are in the final 10 seconds. Are we headed for another judge's decision? It seems to be that way. Huge is trying to change that, but he's going to run out of time. We are going to the judges once again. Let's take a look at the replays while the judges discuss. Nightmare actually started very well, got some early damage, and then it all came undone. Yeah, if Nightmare didn't lose his weapon, he probably would have knocked out Huge in two to three more hits. But as you can see any second here, Huge is just gonna totally take the turn as he gets rid of that weapon. A massive turning point early in this fight. Did Nightmare do enough in terms of control and aggression to maybe win this fight? I feel like he could have because the later half of the match, he was really all up in Huge, controlling where Huge was going, and he didn't get any extra damage, to be fair. And Cap, how do you think this fight went? Did it live up to the billing? I think it did, Nick. I think despite Nightmare losing its weapon, it really kept up that aggression and it made it an interesting fight, despite Huge winning out on that damage, in my opinion. The results from the judges are in. Your winner, by unanimous decision, is... Huge! 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 <laughs> yeah, um, good first win for Huge. It's nice to see, he's a fan favorite. Last year was, of course, very nice. Um, and he'll be looking to top that, but who knows how far he can go. Great win, though. Yeah, good job. <laughs> but... Finally, drum roll please. The main event, we have Bronco versus Wipeout. Let's talk about Bronco first. He had a disappointing exit to Bite Force last season, but once again, there are no changes to the build. It's a very bold move from the Bronco team, and this build is good, don't get me wrong, but how long until it becomes apparent that it's outdated? This might end up being the season. Bronco may have been unlucky to lose to Bite Force last year, um, and maybe that's why they haven't changed anything, because they're thinking, well, we know Bite Force was overpowered last year, and we only lost a one-point split decision. Maybe that's the thinking. But uh, we won't know until we see a couple fights from this Bronco machine, because he's very hit and miss. Yeah, for sure. This will be the season that'll show whether or not he needs to be updated or not. But on the other side, we have Wipeout, and he's back after another stellar season. But now the expectations will be even higher. Absolutely. Back-to-back semifinalist, an absolute brute. He's been one of the top dogs for a while now, despite not having a title. But he is absolutely ready to make that final title push. Builder Mediator has worked hard on him once again. This might be the year for Wipeout. He's definitely got a target on his back. And one final question. Who you got winning? Um, Wipeout does a good job when he's up to full speed at parrying bots away. If Bronco can't get underneath him, it's game over and he's going to get ripped apart. Well, let's see if he does indeed get ripped apart. Down in the box. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? It's robot fighting time! In the Red Square. After five years of failures, he's become more of a disappointment to his fan base than the Dallas Cowboys, but they still think it's his year. It's Bronco! In the blue square, most bots would dream of making the semis, 
But now, it's not good enough for this guy. Nut or bust for Wipeout! These two bots love to win, but if they have any hopes of a first title, now is the time to prove they're ready. Let the main event begin. Bronco coming out quick and he gets a good shot on Wipeout who's already up to speed. He's trying, he was trying to get into Wipeout to prevent him from getting up to speed, but as you can see, oh, it's clearly not working. That's part of Bronco's flipper already ripped off by Wipeout. Not a good start for the flipper. He's taking a little bit of damage here and there. It's interesting to see what strategy they're taking too, trying to rush in there to flip him but maybe the aggression is a little too much right now. A Bronco is falling apart. There are pieces falling off with almost every hit. There's another one that just fell off, and another. It seemed like Bronco wanted to use the rear end to try and slow Wipeout down before getting the flips. It's not working. Yeah, Wipeout is barely slowed down. If maybe he can butt his way over to a wall to prevent Wipeout from spinning, but it seems Wipeout's doing a good job of driving, keeping a very central location. He's doing a very good job of staying central. Bronco is keeping the aggression up to be fair, but he's losing pieces fast. We always talk about it, how it's a war of attrition with flippers against spinners, and right now Bronco is very aggressive, maybe too much. Oh, Ooh. is that was decent. That was the first real chance for Bronco as he unsettled Wipeout, but once again he's back up to full speed. Oh, Wipeout lost a tooth in that last exchange, and Bronco loses a wheel! I don't even know how much is left of Bronco's flipper. I don't think Wipeout knows either, so he's just going to assume there's more to be taken off as we've hit the halfway point in this fight. Wipeout's finally towards the wall. Bronco oh, can good use attack. this to his advantage. This one is not over yet. Bronco has just enough pieces left that he's going to do everything he can to unsettle Wipeout one more time. If he can get the flip, he'll get the win. There's now smoke pouring out of Bronco. Another tooth of Wipeout is on the ground. Can Bronco outlast the Wipeout teeth? That's another strategy that could be available to him. Wipeout did already lose one, so it might be a good strategy. He has six, and I don't know how many he's lost. He oh, might be down nice. to three. And the remainder of Bronco's flipper is now stuck in the upright position. And that wheel goes flying. That ram plate goes flying. For Bronco's defense, luckily, he still has two wheels opposite one another. So driving is still possible. He has taken an absolute beating at this point. It's now probably just the pride of getting to a judge's decision. And he's giving it a go. But Wipeout is not going to let him have it if he has anything to say. These are brutal hits from Wipeout. Bronco has never been this damaged before. Final few seconds, Wipeout is trying to seal it. Will he? Will he be able to get one more solid hit? I think he's got one tooth left. Oh, and I think he got the knockout! Did he get it? He did! That's insane! Unbelievable performance! Well, I know it's early days, but that's probably going to be one of the best main events of the season. Credit to both bots for an unbelievable show. It was awesome. Down to the second, Wipeout got the knockout. But throughout the whole match, Bronco gave it his absolute all. We were talking in the preview on whether the Bronco build is outdated, and I think I've got more questions than answers. It didn't flip, but it held on for almost the entire fight. He, you're correct. He didn't flip, but... Was that partial because he was facing Wipeout, who really couldn't give him the option to? This is why Wipeout is one of the top dogs. Back-to-back semi-finalists, he's eager for his own title. After this fight, who looks more impressive? Who's going to go farther? I'd say Wipeout for sure, but it depends on who he's faced against. And Cap, let's get a word from you. What a show from these bots. What did you see? What did you notice? What do you like? Yeah, Cap. 
I like how dangerous that wipeout build is, man. Bronco had to drive the wheels off just to live as long as he did, and I think he did good just to do that, but that spinning mass of death that wipeout is just a crazy build. Well, so far, Bronco looking like you might need to update. <laughs> It'll be, uh, it'll be hard to judge with the current sample size. Obviously, Wipeout is going to be one of the best bots in this competition. But if you want to be the best bot in the competition, Bronco, these are the ones you have to win. So there is enough evidence to start piecing together a plan. But for now, we've learned a lot about everyone tonight, you know? It is interesting to see how everybody is done, what improvements might need to be done and what we're hoping to see in the rest of the fight night. Definitely, too, some early shakeups in the standings, of course. Hello Chopper losing to Deep Six is a big deal. Bronco's defeat will be a big deal because he's up there on the tier list. Uh, the mini-bot getting destroyed. It's okay, Sam. He'll be back. <laughs> Don't you worry. It won't be next week, but he'll be back eventually. Yes. <laughs> and we might not even be back next week, if I'm being honest, because these aren't coming out every week. I'm we're sorry. We're working on it. We're working on it. We're trying. That's why we're, we're doing here our best. <laughs> But it is the end of the episode, and we are so glad that you stayed and you watched, and we're excited for you guys to come back for more. I am the Sam. I am the Nick. That's the Nick. And uh, this stick is just going to be Cole's stand-in this whole time. Cole's here in spirit. In spirit. <laughs> Bye, everyone. <laughs> I'll put that in after the credits or yeah. something. <laughs>